Genuinely new teams are a rarity in 21st century Formula 1, given building up a new constructor from scratch is almost prohibitively difficult. Yet in 2010, four newcomers were granted a place as the grid expanded to 13 teams, meaning F1 should have hit 26 cars for the first time since 1995. Infamously, USF1 collapsed before it ever participated in an F1 race, although Lotus Racing, Virgin and HRT made it. Or at least they did for a time, as all had vanished by 2017. So let's look back at what led to that flurry of newcomers and why they failed to stick it out in F1. The arrival of the new teams in 2010 was down to a combination of politics and the economic situation. F1's political landscape was dramatically different back then. During the first decade of the 21st century, F1 mostly comprised manufacturer teams that drove independence to the brink of extinction by rapidly inflating costs. The major car companies invested heavily and built an enormous power base, leading to the threat of the Grand Prix Manufacturers Association, or GPMA, breakaway. So the courting of potential new entrants wasn't just about getting more cars onto the grid, it was part of the wider battleground. A new team application process was duly opened for 2010. Cost cutting was a priority at this time. FIA President Max Mosley pushed for an optional budget cap, the idea being that those who competed under such rules would be given competitive benefits to offset the disadvantage of smaller budgets. These included movable wings, increased engine rev limits and the possibility of other technical freedoms. Initially, £30 million was the suggested figure, although when the FIA World Motorsport Council signed off the plan in April 2009, that had risen to £40 million. The basic outline was similar to today's cost cap with a lengthy list of exclusions. While entering F1 as an independent constructor to compete against Megabucks teams was unappealing, the two-tier system at least made it more realistic. Following the demise of the GPMA, the Formula 1 Teams Association, FOSA for short, was pitted against the FIA. It too threatened a breakaway because of concerns about the extreme measures proposed by Mosley. After an extended period of wranglings, FOTA eventually abandoned the breakaway threat after agreeing to formulate major cost reductions on the proviso the optional budget cap was dropped. The FIA agreed and budgets remained unlimited. Of course, the changes that were made didn't make it close to being possible to be competitive on a 40 million budget, but by this point the new teams were committed. In June 2009, shortly before the FIA and the teams agreed on their truce and the breakaway threat was extinguished, the successful applications were announced. These were Campos Grand Prix, MANA Grand Prix and USF1. That's right, no Lotus. Yet. To understand why, keep watching. All of the new teams were powered by Cosworth Engines, which was building up to a return to F1 in 2010 and favoured on the basis that it had been granted a tender to supply F1's spec engine, which was subsequently abandoned. The door was also left open to other new teams in case places became available. Given 15 teams had applied, there were still plenty of aspirants. Meanwhile, the manufacturers were wavering. Honda had withdrawn at the end of 2008, with BMW announcing at the end of July 2009 that it was on its way out. In early November, Toyota confirmed it was also quitting. All of this meant there was an opening for another new team. The Lightspeed Lotus project missed out on a place originally, but was on the reserve list having attracted investment from new owner, entrepreneur Tony Fernandez, who wasn't originally involved. It already had F1 know-how attached, notably through ex-Toyota and Force India technical director Mike Gascoigne, and was given the extra slot, originally at the expense of Sauber, which had lost BMW but couldn't yet commit to competing as an independent. Sauber later took the place vacated by Toyota. The four new teams had their work cut out in a hostile financial environment with no budget cap to help them. USF1 was the first to fall. It had the appeal of being an American team, which was good for business, and had some eye-catching backing, notably YouTube co-founder Chad Hurley. But it never got close to completing a car, let alone making a race. Headed by sometime Ligier technical director Ken Anderson and respected journalist and former Williams team manager Peter Windsor, US F1 collapsed. Despite efforts by Stefan Grand Prix, run by Serbian-born businessman Zoran Stefanovic, to take its place with a team that would have run the unraced 2010 Toyota, the slot was left vacant. Another of the teams almost didn't make it. Adrian Campos's outfit was well established in the junior single-seater ranks and had financial backing from Jose Ramon Carabante, one of the shareholders. 
The team had a deal with Delara to design, build and develop the chassis and was originally led by Campos and the experienced Daniele Aldetto, who would run the Super Aguri team as managing director. But amid rising costs, sponsorship deals collapsed, including backing from Meta Image that led to the team's short-lived Campos Meta 1 title, and Campos parted company with the team before the season started. In February 2010, Carabante took sole ownership and a hastily conceived operation led by Colin Collars as team principal and Jeff Willis as technical director got the team off the ground. This was in its new form as Hispania Racing, named after Carabante to Spania Group, or HRT. Delara was never paid to manufacture the significant upgrades it had designed and the team battled on for three years before it closed down. By then, it was owned by Tesson Capital, but it never scored a point and was always a hand-to-mouth operation. That it lasted as long as it did was remarkable. Lotus Racing lasted until the end of 2014, although its early years were hindered by legal wranglings over the name. This led to it being renamed Caterham in 2012 after Fernandez acquired the legendary kit car company. It was the most successful of the newcomers initially, finishing 10th in the championship both in 2010 and 11. Crucially, that qualified it for the serious prize money. However, the team was not able to build on that, which was partly thanks to the growing costs of F1. The team had hoped for backing from Petronas for its first season, cash that instead went to Mercedes, so despite having worked miracles to get up and running in double quick time and made a credible start, it was unable to push on. The team peaked in 2012, getting close to the midfield pack, but could go no further. It dropped to 11th in 2013, costing it around £10 million of prize money. This brought with it the threat of even bigger losses should it not finish in the top 10 the following year. The struggles of 2014 led to instability, a search for new owners and, ultimately, Caterham dropping off the grid at the United States Grand Prix. Save for a one-race revival in the Abu Dhabi finale, that was it for the team, which had started promisingly but closed down amid acrimony with a record of zero points in 94 races. The most successful of the new teams was Virgin Racing, a joint venture between Manor and Worth Research. Its much-vaunted all-CFD design proved unsuccessful in 2010, not helped by errors such as the car initially having too small a fuel tank, but as the team evolved, it became increasingly credible. The relationship with Worth ended during 2011 and it aligned itself with Ferrari. That allowed it to recruit Jules Bianchi in 2013 after initial driver Luis Razzia's sponsorship money dried up before the season started. Bianchi scored points for his battling drive to ninth at Monaco the following year. That made it the only member of the 2010 intake to score points, a feat it repeated with Pascal Wehrlein at the 2016 Austrian Grand Prix. By then, the team had become Manor after its alliance with Russian car company Marussia ended. The team worked miracles to continue, considering a combination of parting with Marussia and the devastating loss of Bianchi after his 2014 Japanese Grand Prix accident. But this was a team with real spirit, genuine potential and strong leadership, and it battled on. It was taken over by billionaire Stephen Fitzpatrick for 2015 in the hope of either landing more backing or being able to sell the team on. Team founders John Booth and Graham Loudon left at the end of 2015. Ultimately, Manor was doomed by the financial hit of losing 10th in the Constructors' Championship to Sauber by the narrowest of margins in 2016. The administrators were called in and Manor couldn't be revived. That made it the last of the 2010 influx to fall. While the class of 2010 brought much to F1, ambition, the odd giant killing performance and a boost to grid numbers, they were never given a fair crack of the whip. The dropping of the budget cap was the key factor, which was the consequence of the new teams being used as a political football in a wider battle. Far from dropping, budgets continued to rise and the team spent most of their time propping up the grid. While the plucky underdog teams produced some memorable moments and considering their disadvantage proved themselves to be very effective teams, they were doomed before they even started. <laughs>